Hey guys, it's Coded Steel, and welcome to your first tutorial in electric circuits. This is more or less of a tutorial, actually, guys. This is more of just educating you or trying to give you a formal education on electric circuits. So, first of all, what we're going to discuss today in this lesson are the th three concepts that drive a circuit, basically which are voltage, current, and resistance, and then the relationship that ties those three together. So, where do we start with this? We kind of start exactly with this first thing here, voltage. What is voltage? Basically, guys, I'm going to give you my definition of voltage. This is such an important concept. Well, they're all three very important concepts, and so is Ohm's Law. It's a very, those are all very important concepts. Sorry I'm kneeling down, guys. This is kind of the space I have to work with, so you're just going to have to deal with the scrub and his conditions that he has, and hopefully you guys learned something from me. So, what is voltage? I'm going to give you my definition of voltage. I'm sure there's ton of them, tons of them out there, but this is what I think is a very good definition for voltage, and it kind of explains to you guys exactly what voltage really does and what its role is in a circuit. Voltage in is actually just a force. It's a force that drives charge. And you guys might ask what charge is. Charge is basically used to describe protons and electrons. Hopefully you guys know what these things are, but in electric circuits we're not concerned with this, we're concerned with this, because this is what actually makes all of our components, or all of our cell phones and TVs and, and you know, whatever else, video game systems all work, is actually electrons. We'll explain this more later, why it's electrons and not protons that contribute to, you know, powering devices and whatever else. But anyways, voltage is a force that drives charge, or Current is another definition you can go here. So that leads us to our next topic. I have current up here on the board. What is current? Current is actually nothing more than the movement of charge. So current, guys, is the movement of charge, just as I have here on the board. Charge is protons or electrons. What in this case, like I said, we're not concerned with protons, we're concerned with electrons. So current is actually the movement of electrons. That means, what does that actually mean? I'm going to paint you guys kind of a picture here for current. Voltage we'll kind of get into a little more later, but I'm going to paint you guys kind of a picture here. Just This is going to be a wire. And it's very thick wire, guys. So... <laughs> But this is kind of just to paint an idea here. If we take any cross section of this wire, so just a small little piece of it, infinitesimally small, and we take a small cross section of this and we blow it up, we can see these electrons moving through here. So what that is, is that actually is current. Current is something that is measured in amps. We use amps to measure this. I should have actually said this before. Voltage, we use volts. It's named, the unit's named after Volta, the guy who discovered electric potential. So, an electric potential is just another fancy word for voltage. Let me actually put that up there. So electric potential and voltage are equivalent. They mean the same thing. Anytime somebody talks about an electric potential, they're referring to a voltage. So just make sure you guys remember that. So when we get back to what we were talking about down here, kind of the movement of charge. Current is simply the amount of charge moving past any given point of a wire. So if we take a point in a wire and we are at a certain duration of time, and we look at the charge within that wire, or passing through that cross-section, that's the current. If we measure the amount of charge that passes through that per second, that's the current. So, that is measured in amps. And, obviously, like I said before, volts is measured in volts. Okay, 
So what is this third concept here, resistance? This is actually the relationship that ties these, this is, resistance is what ties these two together. It makes it, makes it to where these two can be equivalent to each other. So let me first explain what resistance is. Resistance is nothing more than just an opposition to charge flow. Charge flow, current flow, whatever you guys want to use, it's the same diff, okay? Current flow, charge flow, it's the same thing. And you don't really say charge flow is current. So you can just opposition to current or opposition to charge flow. It's the same thing. So this resistance is measured in a really odd symbol, which we don't have in the English language. It comes from the Latin Latin symbols, and it's measured by something called the capital omega, which is drawn kind of like that. I'm very bad at drawing any form of letters. I don't even think, eh, there, I think that's, that's a good depiction of it. Um, that's the letter omega, and that's used to represent resistance. That's the units for resistance. So now that we kind of have these three concepts described here, um, we're going to relate them all together by this final topic, which is Ohm's Law. But before we do that, um, I really need to strike these to bring these topics home for you guys just to kind of make sure you understand them. These are three very, very important concepts. If you guys don't understand this, it's going to make learning future things in electric circuits extremely difficult. So kind of just one more time, guys. Remember, voltage, force charge drives charge, and it's electrons that we're concerned with. Remember that. Current, movement of charge. Resistance, opposition to charge flow. You guys really need to understand those topics if you're going to try to get any further in this series or understand how stuff works. So really drill that into your heads. Okay. Um, final thing we're going to do here is we're going to discuss Ohm's Law. So I'm going to erase everything on here. Hopefully you guys kind of drank that all in and you understand what's going on. The last topic is just going to be Ohm's law. Now what is Ohm's law? It's nothing more than a relationship that was discovered by George Ohm. I think that's how you spell his name. No E. Whatever. I'm going to capitalize it. So George Ohm. Um, what, we, what he did was he discovered the relationship that ties these three topics together which is his law. In fact, what is his law? His law is this. V equals I R. Simple enough, guys. It's a very simple thing. But believe it or not, scientists were battling with this concept for a long time. And many different people had different Thing, different relationships for voltage and current. They, a lot of, some people said it was something with the cross-section of area and all this other stuff that relates voltage and current together. But one person, Ohm, actually discovered that it was this relationship through experimentation. If you want to learn about how he discovered it, look at it online, read a Wikipedia thing on him or something like that or whatever. Um, he just did a ton of experiments and he figured it out. That's how he did it. So... This here is the relationship. What do each of these symbols stand for? This is a very important thing, too. You guys need to know what these stand for. V, I hope this is simple enough, guys. V is voltage. Okay, that, that kind of should just make 100% sense to you right away. If it doesn't, well, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I can really help you with that. R, resistance. Another thing that should just kind of be like, oh, that's, that's obvious. He discussed resistance, R, resistance, V, voltage, okay? This last one, kind of by process of elimination, you can figure out that it's current. But it's an I. They use an I because it's some Greek word for current or blah, 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 or whatever. So this is represents current. So what is all this stuff? Hopefully you guys are familiar with algebra. And you understand that this is nothing more than just voltage being equal to current times resistance. So if I'm given a current and a resistance, 
and I multiply them together, I'm going to get a voltage or an electric potential. Remember, guys, voltage, electric potential are the same thing, so I'm going to use them interchangeably so you guys know if I use voltage, I mean electric potential. If I you know, say electric potential, I mean voltage. Okay? It's the same diff. So now that we've kind of got that figured out, let's kind of end this tutorial off with a simple problem just showing you kind of how Ohm's law works. So what we're going to say is I'm going to show you guys kind of how all these things are represented here. We're just going to say we have a block here. And we have an electric potential across this block of 10 volts. Okay? And we're going to say that we have a current which is represented by an arrow of 2 amps flowing through that block. Okay, these values aren't really realistic, guys, and I'll explain to you in future tutorials. Right now, this is just a mathematical example, so you guys kind of really get this concept drilled home to you. What is the resistance of this block? So, what is the resistance? Okay, hopefully this is simple enough to you guys, and you understand algebraic manipulation, that you can just rewrite this as R equals V times I. Did nothing more than just divide the I to the other side of the equation. We have the voltage, we have the current. So I can just take 10 volts, divide that by 2 amps, and I get R is equal to 5 ohms. Hopefully that makes 100% sense to you guys how I got to this point. I understand for some of you this might be very simple math. I, I get that, okay. This is just an introductory step that to try to get you guys thinking in the right mindset or right mindset so we can move on further. The things you guys really need to take home from this, I'm pretty sure this part, the math part, makes sense to a lot of you. Things that you guys really need to understand are the definitions that I explained to you of what voltage, current, and resistance were in the beginning. If you guys thoroughly understand those definitions, then you're going to be pretty much ready for the next tutorial where we're actually going to move into a little bit more advanced concepts and actually circuit symbols and voltage sources and all this other stuff. So anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial for electric circuits.